Welcome to the last of three Q&A video lessons I'm doing this spring. And the first session was on um, practicing and reaching higher levels. The second one was on technique questions. And today is all about sound on the guitar, mainly fingernails. Um, people have lots of questions about fingernails, but also just sound on the instrument itself. So um, watch the video for free as always. Um, but all of these questions come from my Patreon supporters. So thanks so much to everyone on Patreon. Um, if you're interested in supporting the site, either in free ways or uh, financially, um, there's a link to the support page below. When we're talking about fingernails on the guitar, there's three um, lessons I want you to look, on, look at on the site. The guitar position and posture lesson. Um, we have to make sure that the guitar is positioned right. Watch the right hand technique video so that we know that our fingers are moving in the right direction and that our arm is positioned correctly. Because this is the order that we do things, right? It's posture and guitar position, hand position, and then fingernails. Because if, if any of those things are out, then doing your nails is going to be, it's, it's tough because there's too many variables. Everyone is, is a little bit different, but if we all, if we all sit generally in, this, in a similar fashion, with adjustments to your personal needs, but generally, and we have good right hand technique and movement, then we can have a discussion on fingernails. So posture, right hand position, and then the fingernail lesson. That should answer a bunch of questions, but then uh, I hope that we clarify other things here. One more thing before I dive into the questions. Um, make sure that after filing your fingernails, like watch my fingernail article, and then um, make sure you're practicing a wide variety of techniques. So, you know, IM scales, MA scales, arpeggios, rest stroke, free stroke, um, with the thumb and all that, like all the different right hand techniques to make sure that your nail shape is working with all the techniques. Because sometimes students will do their nails, it sounds great for free strokes, but if they do anything different, um, it throws them, it like hooks or something like that. So it's a compromise game, right? Like you, you find a good shape and then you do free stroke, but then it's not good enough for your rest stroke, so you get them shorter for your rest stroke and you find this kind of middle ground that works with all the different techniques. The other thing too is besides the position and your hand position and your, your filing, make sure that when you're playing you're aware of what happens when you do different things on the instrument. So when we play back here it's brighter, right? When we play up here it's warmer. When we play perpendicular to the string it's tinny. When we play parallel smooths out. And then when you play across the strings, usually um, we follow the extension of the fingers. And also, because the bass strings are so big and round sounding, we tend to try to balance the sound by being more ponticello here, and ergonomically following the direction our fingers extend. We play up in this direction. A lot of students do the, make the mistake of going like this, where they get brighter and brighter as they go towards the brighter strings. They also end up with a more perpendicular hand position, which makes their nail sound much more tinny. So um, working on your general technique and being aware of it, also doing experiments with having an awareness of how the angle of your hand hits the strings and affects the sound will be key to answering some of the questions as we go through. But beginners, you should be more focused on um, just building a foundation of good technique, not worrying about your nails too much. Intermediate players, you're going to start zeroing in on smoothing out your sound, um, circling areas in your score where you want to make sure that you're careful with your sound or muting. Um, and then more advanced players, um, you have to make sure you've worked with enough teachers that you've tackled the problem already. One other thing to consider too is that professional guitarists play in big concert halls and they have nail noise. There's some nail noise. Um, you don't usually hear it because you're so far back, but there's a certain amount. They play really loud. They need to reach everyone in the hall. So there's a certain amount of nail noise on the guitar. Any instrument, like bowed instruments, have um, noise associated with them. Usually, though, 
as you advance and get more um, advanced in your technique, your sound production goes up. So you play, you're literally playing a lot louder all the time. So there's more resonance and more tone coming out of your instrument. And that tends to cover up a lot of those little tiny finicky little noises that you otherwise wouldn't hear. But just remember that if you sit a few, if someone sits a few feet back from you, they might not hear as much nail noise as you're hearing, right? Because you're literally right there. What audience member is going to be like one foot from your guitar, right? You're one foot away from your guitar. That'd be like having their head right here listening to your nail noise. It's not really realistic. A couple feet back and you hear a lot less. Not to say that we shouldn't try to reduce it and improve upon our sound and make sure that we're covering up as good as we can. Nevertheless, um, there, it, some sound does exist. So I think we should just dive right in. Most of the questions are on fingernails. So Stanley asks, I'd be interested in a lesson addressing tone and noise on the bass strings when using the fingers as opposed to the thumb. So the fingers on the bass strings. Most of the time I manage to get a decent tone on the bass strings, but often enough, I get a soft scraping or brushing noise, which seems to be caused more by finger flesh just before the nail follows through. I've experimented with different strike angles, worked on just using the nail, etc. Uh, but I'm not sure after that. So, and thanks. Okay, so my advice first, and this is for everyone, is the first thing I think you should do is check out those three other articles I have, which I'll put links in the description. But first thing, let's do some experiments with getting a very scrapey tone and a non-scrapey tone. And the other thing I want to say is that professional players often play in big concert halls, and so people are quite far away. And if you listen to a pro player up close, they might have quite a bit of fingernail noise. Um, like I met one of my guitar heroes, uh, Kazuhito Yamashita, and uh, up close you could hear lots of nail noise, but on the stage he sounded great. Um, but pros play loud and they have long nails and, and you know there's lots of noise, but you don't really hear that from the audience. So that's the first thing I, I do want to say is that there might just be some noise. Um, I'm not saying we shouldn't try to reduce it, but um, pros do have nail noise. Um, so that's a consideration to just keep in mind as we try to solve some problems. But first thing, we'll experiment with getting some very scrapey sounds and then getting rid of them. So if I mute the strings with the left hand, just touch the strings here. You hear all that scrape? And then no scrape, scrape. But none when... when when a slight angle is changed. Lots of scrape. Not much scrape. You see how subtle the adjustment is too in my right hand? It's like the difference between this and this. This, this, almost not noticeable, right? So that's an important point. Um, when you play on the treble strings, it's the opposite, right? Like, if you go really perpendicular to the string, you get a very naily sound. And when you play parallel, it warms up a lot, right? On the bass strings, it's kind of the opposite. If you play parallel, you get lots of scrape. So you have to go a little bit more perpendicular to get, to get rid of that. So make sure you experiment with that first, and that you... you you're aware of how subtle the change is between scrape and no scrape. So very subtly do some exercises where you do that. The other thing is that you want to be careful about how long your nails are. They should be fairly short. Um, I cover all this in the, in the nail filing um, video, but you know, like I start my nail sessions off with kind of rounding out the nails a little bit. They already have a, a ramp that goes up. Again, look at that fingernail article a ramp that goes up but I always like to smooth it out a little bit especially around the edges almost get rid of it get rid of the nail almost on the very edge before the contact point so you can get flesh and nail on contact at the same time and then just making sure that the final strokes are just like one direction across the file as if the string was striking the nail and then you, you, you can use microfiber or whatever or micro mesh but um, I use like a multi-sided 
polisher. Um, but we don't have time for a nail, a full nail lesson today. So watch that other video because all my advice is there. Um, but so experiment with the sound. If your nails are too long, the potential for more scrape is going to be there on the bass strings. Keep in mind, we don't play on the bass strings too much with the with the fingers. So um, when you do, like you can go pretty perpendicular to get rid of a lot of it. Um, so that's a couple of things right there. Awareness of the angles and doing some experimentation, making sure you're, you're well, you know, filed and rounded, um, your guitar position, everything like that. Um, being aware that the pros have some, a certain amount of noise in their playing, um, you know, on the strings and, and then going from there. When you contact the string, you should be contacting with flesh and nail. So flesh is holding the kind of the string there, but so is the nail is touching the string. And if your nail's not too long, it shouldn't create too much of a tick when it when it hits there. But nevertheless, there there might be a little bit. Um, keep watching. I'm going to answer some more questions, and maybe um, some of the other things will help out as well. Okay, Barbara asks. I'm currently on Method Book 2 and struggling with my fingernails. I've been filing them to your suggestions, tick tick noises, etc. Um, after all the hassle, I'm getting to the point where I want to cut them off, although I just wanted the opportunity to ask if there's anything else I could do. One thing I'll say is that um, you can't get frustrated with nails. Um, I've taught lots of students who go into nails in the first little while. It's very frustrating, yep, because lots of experimentation is needed. Um, one thing I'll say for for students is that um, if you could have a teacher actually do your nails for you and look at your your whole setup and everything, that might be really helpful for them to actually literally grab the nail file and take your hand and do them for you. Um, it might clue you into something that you, you're missing. So if you could, I'm sure most teachers would be happy just to have one lesson just where they talk about nails with you. That'd be fine. Um, so that might that might be one solution. Of course, do all the research on my site and everything like that um, to make sure that that also helps. Experimentation is really key to all this. Um, I can't tell you exactly. I can tell you the shape I use and what I recommend to people, but everyone is like a little bit different. Their angle is a little bit different. Their actual nails are different shapes. Their guitar is different. They're using different strings. There's all these variables. So sometimes having a teacher do them for you can help, but experimentation is key, but it's frustrating because if you shave your nails down a lot, then it takes a while for them to grow back. But there's not much um, I can say. Some people need a shorter ramp of their nails so that there's less, there's just literally less nail. And to answer Stanley's question more, having a shorter ramp may reduce the amount of scraping on the strings because it's just a shorter amount of it. Um, so, you know, more shaving off on the edge so that you get more flesh and less nail. All these different little experiments. When I was experimenting lots with nails, I would do extremes. I would do like extreme ramps and then almost rounding out the whole nail. I would try everything um, to, to find a, the shape that worked perfectly for my nails and my posture and the sound I wanted. That said, you know, um, like I said, professionals do get a certain amount of like nail noise and that it's acceptable to have some so you you don't want to get too um, caught up in it the other thing is like once you start hearing something and you start obsessing about it a little bit it's it's gonna come out of the sound a lot more because you're you're so focused on it and sometimes it's just not that big of a deal like if you played for someone else they wouldn't even notice um or if you had a pro play you right next to you you might realize like oh they have nail noise too um, it's just part of like the instrument. Just like on string instruments, like the bow on the string, there's a certain amount of, of harsh bow, bow noise on violins that uh, is unavoidable. It kind of gets covered up by the large amount of projection they get out of their instrument. But there, there's noises that go along with the guitar. We have to be accepting of that to a certain degree and, of course, try to reduce it as much as possible. But there's a certain amount of noise. The other thing, it's okay if you cut your nails off. Um, if you're not playing in concert halls, um, you can do that. You might get a little bit less of a clear sound 
and you might have a little bit less control over the strings uh, in terms of modern classical guitar technique. But people play without nails. Pros, there are pros that play without nails. There's early music people that play without nails. It's okay. You can do whatever you want. It's your hobby. So, and it, playing without the nails can be quite warm and pleasant sounding. Um, I've, lots, I've had lots of students that sound great without nails. The only issue is when they go to play like chamber music with another guitarist that does have nails, the other guitarist might be a little bit louder, a little bit more clear, that kind of stuff. So it's a sacrifice, but for a lot of people practicing at home, um, I understand if you cut your nails off. Um, but nevertheless, I would say a lot of students, they get really close to cutting them off, and then they experiment for another few months and they, they figure it out. Um, so <laughs> there's that too. So you have to kind of like judge about how much have I actually experimented with doing the shapes. Okay, Karen asks, um, I had a problem with the right hand index fingernail that sounded a bit funky. Tick, tick noises, um, unless I let it grow out to an extreme and then it would kind of hook no matter what my filing and position on the guitar. So I watched a video by Brandon Acker. Uh, he's great. Um, recently, and he cut his nails off. Um, I saw that video. He cut them off. I couldn't believe it. Um, I did the same, and I, I'm free. Um, I do a lot of outdoor work around my home, and I was just looking for a mellower sound. It's been a week, and I'm still experimenting. But one thing I didn't, didn't, did not anticipate was that I would have to change my guitar position to a more horizontal one, which has helped with my left hand accuracy and speed. So you, Karen found a plus of, of cutting the nails off. But maybe you also found a plus just from experimentation with your guitar position or something. Um, so yeah, um, okay, so you, this is kind of similar to, to what Barbara was saying. Um, so you've done it, you've cut your nails off, and you're, you're free. So that's okay. No problem with that. If you're happy, then that's, that's great. Don't worry about it. Um, there's, I think I've covered everything having to do with um, with like the, the noise on on the fingernails on the on the guitar, like when you place your fingers, yeah, like sometimes, do you hear that? This is an extreme example because I'm like throwing my finger at the string and trying to hit only with the nail. But yeah, there's a little bit of sound. But you know, going further with this, um, another thing I'll say is that like. When your technique improves and you have strong technique, you probably have lots of sound production. And the more sound production you have, maybe the less you're going to notice the, the little tiny nail noises. Uh, whereas when you're starting out with guitar, you know, you, you play soft and, um, and then you hear a lot of the nail noise because you're, you're actually playing soft as well. So it kind of amplifies um, the other one by comparison. So, yeah, you either have to experiment and continue to work on your nails or, yeah, chop them off. But there, there's, there's some um, downsides to chopping the nails off, especially if you're aiming for higher levels or you're playing with other guitarists. So just keep that in mind. That's all. Um, ben asks, when I move my fingers from one string to another, I can hear a bit of sound from the previous string, especially when I have to move quickly. Is this something to worry about or is that just normal? Um, I couldn't tell, Ben, if you were talking about your right hand or your left hand, but let's just talk about both. Why not, right? When you move your fingers from one string to another on the left hand, there's sometimes, you know, if you release too quickly or too aggressively, um, you're going to get like a pull-off, essentially, like a, a slur, a hammer-on pull-off. So you might get some sound from that. You know, like even if I don't pluck, can hear a little bit of sound after that. It depends on, on what the texture is that you're playing. Most of the time in classical guitar, you know, like we're switching on and there's new notes occurring, so you don't really have to worry too much about a little bit of extra noise. But yeah, in some situations, it's a real, it's a real pain because you lift off and you actually hear another pitch, which if you can hear it through the microphones or your audience can hear it, um, that would be bad for the music composition if you had another sound or pitch coming into the mix. So um, a couple of things is making sure that you don't your hand isn't so tight that when you do release a note that you um, don't get too much of, of a pull-off sound afterwards. If you move a little slower, there'll be a split second when your finger releases from the metal of the fret, but it's still touching the string. 
meaning that it'll mute the string. So doing a slower, more relaxed release um, will reduce the amount of, of kick compared to that, right? But you know, you can't micromanage this too much. So sometimes you'll see like there's muting techniques if you have to mute the sound completely. Or if you're switching to a new string, you know, sometimes in the thumb, when you plant on the new string, you mute with the side of your thumb. But that's getting pretty advanced. And, um, and so there's a whole world of muting, but I guess the, the thing is, is, is that it's on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the texture. Um, guitars, are, like I've said before, the guitar is a little bit of a wild instrument, but so are lots of string instruments. Um, they produce all sorts of sounds and things like that. And as I was saying before, as you get stronger technique, you know, this, the sound of the overall resonance of your instrument will probably cover up the majority of those sounds enough that you don't have to worry about it too much. But there's always going to be some specific situations where, you know, you have to release a little bit slower. But those would be very specific moments that you'd want to take a red pen or something and circle in your repertoire saying like, oh, if I'm recording this or performing it on stage, like, I'm going to want to mute that specific note at that specific time. You can't do it with every single note if the playing is fast or something like that. But you could selectively choose when you're going to do a slow, gentle release or some kind of mute. So like if I mute the string with this finger, I can release this however I want. You know, and, but I can mute the string as well. So my first piece of advice is don't worry about it. it it's okay. Um, it, especially if you're more on the beginner side, th there's going to be all sorts of wild noises. Just focus on playing with good technique and don't get put off by some of the wilder sounds of the guitar. But uh, yeah, as you advance more, more um, you'll want to be more selective about what, what sounds are allowed and what kind of muting techniques you'll be doing. Um, if you were talking about the right hand, you might be talking about like, you know, when you go from one string to another, if you get a little bit of like click when you rest on the string below or something like that during a rest stroke, for example. I think that goes back to what we were talking about with like the length of your nail and making sure that you're getting flesh and nail contact. The flesh tends to dampen the nail sound or any kind of string bouncing up and down on your fingernail. So that's an important aspect. Okay, Hayes asks... I'm still trying to figure out. I'm still trying to find a fingernail style that I like that doesn't occasionally sound tinny to me. What would you recommend? Yeah, we've kind of already covered this. Um, experimentation is absolutely key. Making sure your guitar position and your hand position is good is also really important. Um, and you know, if you watch professional players, there's occasions when they just change their whole technique to make sure they get a good sound. Like, if they're playing something that requires a clear texture down here, but then they need a soft sound on just one of those. You know, you can either do it by going perpendicular, and then going more parallel. Because the more parallel you strike the string, probably if your nails are done well, the, the more smooth it's going to be. So um, pros will like, they'll, they'll either do a switch of their hand position or they'll like reach out and play a, a very specific note um, as warm as possible. So um, you have to go through all the things I said before for all the other questions, but then you may have to like uh, identify keep very close track identifying when you sound tinny and why. So making sure you've done experiments where it's like... Where you play really tinny, go to smooth. Go back to tinny. Smooth. And then when you're playing and you hear a tinny sound, maybe you have to just look at your right hand and say like, oh, that's because it's with my A finger and my hand is gravitated this way. And so I... I'm getting that perpendicular sound. Um, so, and then just like circling it in the music and making sure that when you play that note there, that you're not, you're not doing that. But again, experimentation, 
both in your filing, but also experiment with your technique and angle um, will be very, very important. And like I said before too, um, if it becomes a real problem, maybe getting a teacher to like do your nails once or twice just so maybe they can figure it out or, or help you not have to experiment as much. You know, they can just, teachers don't give you all the answers all the time, but they can really speed up the process by putting you on the right track. So I hope that answers some of your questions. Um, it's kind of a complicated issue and for the beginners in the in the audience, um, just don't worry about it too much. Just focus on building a foundation of technique. Um, intermediates, you can start becoming more specific by circling areas where your sound isn't so great or you need to, you need special attention. And then more advanced players, you know, you have to make sure that you're, or people going in the advanced direction, you have to make sure you've worked with teachers that have, have worked this out with you um, uh, to a higher level, right?